welcome to the Ruby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing my second vlog on the channel, which is the 2022 Magic Weekend. I'll be heading up to Newcastle today on the Saturday, and I'll be doing a vlog of the, the games. I did my first vlog about a month ago when I went and watched the 2022 Challenge Cup semi-final between St. Ellens and Wigan. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever been to St. James's Park. I've been outside the ground a couple of times and I've worked around Newcastle, I know the city quite well, but this will be the first time I'm actually going in the stadium, so I'm buzzing over that and uh, I'll be checking out some things before I go into the ground, but um, we've got three games today, we've got Toulouse Olympique against Wakefield Trinity, a, a battle of uh, relegation there, we've got Snellens against Wigan, face against second and then we've got Castleford against Leeds. But uh, I'll be heading up to Newcastle shortly. I'll be catching the X10 bus. I only live about an hour away from Newcastle, so it won't take long to get there. But uh, stay tuned for the rest of the vlog, and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, as you can see across the road there, there's a gathering. I think there's some sort of uh, event going on across the road there. But um, there's quite a few people around the area. Every different kit you can imagine. There was even a, a witness, some, someone wearing a witness kit. A couple of people wearing Bradford kits. So there's not only just people from uh, Super League clubs here. It's also a championship as well. But it's, it's red hot to the eight. It's uh, about 20 degrees at the moment. I think it's going to get hotter, but it's going to. I think it's going to be a cracking day inside St James's Park. So let's head over. I think this just shows you how big of a ground St James's Park is when you have to step about 100 yards away from it just to get it all in shot. Well, this is a, a rugby league vlog, but. Just in the Newcastle United store, quite a bit in here, like not as big as what I thought it would be, though. But um, now you've got the Newcastle home kits there, they're probably about 80 quid. <laughs> so, um, some junior ones. We've far read into uh, St. James's Park this afternoon. I thought I'd just give you a bit of a background on the ground. So, it was uh, opened in 1880 and it was um, the home ground of Newcastle Rangers and then it was the home ground of also Newcastle West End from 1886 to 1892 and Newcastle East End and then in 1892 after uh, Newcastle West End and East End both ceased to exist uh, Newcastle United took over the ground and it's been there ever since so uh, it's been a professional football venue for all the 100, nearly 120 years now, so it's a, a very historic ground. It's the eighth biggest ground in England in terms of capacity and size. And uh, it's got a brief history of the rugby league, apart from the magic weekends. There's only been two tests played here, the first being in 1909, I think the second was in 1911. Uh, there's going to be a World Cup match here, the open one between England and Samoa. I'm holding the goal for that. But, uh, it's a historic ground in England and it's a ground that's well known up and down the country and uh, I'm going to be going in there very short.
fucking beach ball off the field.
After a very long day at Magic Weekend, I watched the opening two games to lose Olympic and Wakefield Trinity and St Helens and Wigan. Uh, both games were quite good. I didn't end up watching Leeds and Castleford because of uh, issues with my phone. I couldn't find a place to charge it and, and the battery were getting a bit low. And also, there was only a couple of buses remaining to take me back to where I live. And I just thought I better not risk it. I may as well just leave early to ensure it. I get home safe and sound but saying with the Toulouse Olympic and Wakefield match at half time I thought that Wakefield Trinity were going to run away with it and uh, at that point I went Toulouse Olympic they're, um, they're as good as relegated because if Wakefield Trinity would have won that match it would have um, meant that they had a bit of a, a lead over Toulouse Olympic and would have ensured safety I think but this just throws the whole relegation uh, fight into, into a new realm and I think uh, Toulouse Olympic will have a good chance of staying up now and they played very well in that second half. And as for the St Helens and Wigan game, I thought that St Helens uh, played very positive to start off with. Uh, maybe trying a bit too hard. Uh, they had a couple of chances, but Wigan held them out. Their, their defence was quite good. And uh, we also made some pretty silly mistakes, especially even after half-time, we made some very silly errors and some very basic errors that we, we normally don't make and 
uh, when Wigan got out to a bit of a lead, I thought, oh, here we go, and then we, we, we ended up coming back, and and then uh, the red card kind of changed things. I thought we were going to go on with it, and Jai Field sets up that try for Bevan French, and I thought to myself, the Wigan are going to steal this one again, and uh, I was thinking about the goal kicking, because once again, we mi missed a, quite a few conversions today. I think we only kicked two from six and uh, but luckily for, uh, as as the old saying goes you never ride off the scene so once again uh, a great play by Bachelor back on the inside of Johnny, Johnny Lomax and he scores the match winning try and uh, the whole end just erupted where I where I, where I was sitting just uh, it was it was a great feeling and it was good to, good to beat Wigan it's a very tight game and I think this will probably be the grand final to be fair like I, I think that we'll more, more than likely play Wigan in the grand final but overall it were a good day at the uh, magic weekends there were a couple of crowd disturbances uh, but I suppose that's what happens when you have rival sets of supporters sat near each other plus I think some people have been drinking since the early hours of the morning certainly when I got to Newcastle the pubs were already full and that were about 12 o'clock, half 12. Um, but there, there was fans from all different clubs, and even from the NRL, I saw a random Cronulla fan, random South fan, um, saw a, a random Parramatta fan as well. So there, there was rugby league fans of all shapes, sizes, and clubs that attended. Uh, there was about 36,000 that attended the, the opening day, which I thought was really good. But um, anyways, that's uh, my vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, hopefully I get to do more of these in the future. But thanks for watching the vlog and um, stay tuned for more videos. This has been Ruby League History. And I'll catch us all later in the next one. Alright, tatty bye for now.